Open Flooring Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Eddard's 148th scale Rebox of the Hasegawa um, F105 Starfighter. Obviously this is in the German markings, but it has got it in. Eddard tend to do these reboxes, and some of them, I must admit, hands up, I'm not a massive fan of. Some of them, I think, yeah, that's great. Um, you tend to find they've always used not the best kit. Um, it's always been the slightly lower quality. For instance, a bit like the F15, I tend to hold in very high esteem the Hasegawa F15C, and certainly the Ravel 148 F15E, uh, Strike Eagle, but they went along the Academy route with that one, which is fair enough. Uh, and some of their other boxings, it's been a little bit as I say, just not the best kit. It's always been, you know, one down there. And obviously they've probably got their reasons for them. Recently we uh, looked at their uh, Sherman. Um, this is 135th scale one in a previous review. Uh, and that one was actually the top of the range kit because it's actually the Tusker kit, which is, you know, the armor guys seem to think that's the best kit there is. So brilliant. This particular one has got the Hasegawa kit in it, which in my eye is the best F uh, Starfighter. Uh, the 104 you're gonna get, okay, certainly over some of the, the lesser ones that are available out there, shall we say. So being, uh, this is one of their, what they call the limited edition, uh, Brazin, Stroke, Photo Etch kits and all the rest of it in there. So you got the best kit with the best aftermarket parts. So certainly it's a brilliant kit. Beautiful box art, as you can see, pretty plain on there. Some of the markings you can look forward to, should we say, we've got a nice selection of obviously very colorful markings through to camos, through to metal finishes, things like that. You can also do the Air Force one, which is very nice. The kit number for this one is number 1195, okay. And then obviously talking about the uh, brazen bits, which we absolutely love uh, because it's great. You've got the best resin with the best photo etch sets, things like that down in there. So having a look inside the box, as you can see, we just pop that down there. We have the instructions. We'll start with the instructions because we like to do it that way. So we've got beautifully printed, as we know. Um, we've obviously got it in um, German and obviously in English. Um, we've got your call out. So if we just open up this camera, it's a little bigger than I thought. Okay. So usual thing, you've got the various things. Now, um, you know, obviously it's a Haskell kit. There is some parts you're not going to use because they're from different variants. But also as it's showing, which is what I would do if I was doing this kit, you've got the actual uh, detailed photo etch set for the cockpit, which is a beautiful thing indeed. And you've got a great resin aftermarket seat. And to be honest, it's the only two things this kit actually needs. So as you can imagine, we're talking about um, for the photo etch cockpit set, replacing what is in the cockpit, usual thing things very nicely very clearly marked out and everything else going down you get a bit of an engine on these uh, you get a nicely detailed wheel well and then because of its nature you've got the bulkheads and then those parts all going in there just like that as you can see all right then next off it's into the actual cockpit itself so the cockpit as you can imagine you're going to be replacing um, the standard part with all of that very nice color photo etch set which will really save you a lot of time and effort and do a fantastic job at the same time Intex going on okay and then obviously more photo etch parts going in there to make up some more of the actual cockpit work as we know various parts on there those little tiny stubby wings speed brakes being fitted so forth and so on the main undercarriage going in okay then we've got the, obviously the nose wheel fuel tanks being put together and going on Okay, then about super detailing up that seat uh, because obviously it's the brazen part with all the harnesses which will really bring it to life and as you can see it is a piece of artwork on its own all the way through. Then it's a case of installing that, the final installation of all the various parts on there and then you've got a mask set that comes with it as well for the cockpit and for the wheels which is absolutely brilliant. It's not a very complicated kit but it is a really nice kit as you'll see in a moment especially when you think of its age. So usual things, we've got actually um, Tactical Air Meet uh, from 1980 at Ramstein Air Force Base uh, from June there, which absolutely beautiful markings, lovely in that one. Uh, we've got the more sort of metal finish uh, with the white wings, various things like that going on down there as well from an earlier one from 64. Uh, we've got one here as well. Um, which is the marine one, uh, the navy one, uh, which is a beautiful markings again. This day glow orange really makes them pop, if you like. I'm a massive fan of it in German markings. Or you can go back and you can do some of these more sort of normal ones. Uh, this is the Luca Air Force Base one from 1982, uh, one of the test aircraft ones. So again, beautiful markings with that one. Or if you wanted to go for something very nice and colourful, uh, we've got the red, white, and the blue there uh, again from the uh, German Marine fighter sections. 
absolutely beautiful stencil data quite a bit around there to go on so as you can imagine there's quite a bit all in there to go all the way through so in the box you've got one giant bag obviously because it's a repop if you like um, obviously I presume this bag just gets sent to Eddard then they redo all their bits and pieces in here so in the bag which unfortunately is the only drawback with Hasegawa stuff they do tend to like to chuck it all in one giant bag and uh, worry about the consequences afterwards so you do get a little bit of sprue rub uh, things like that if I can get even out would be nice up a bit more always check the bag for bits especially when you get them all together in one giant bag they rub together some things come off okay so just always keep hold of that bag always check for parts as you can see we've got a little bit of sprue tree down here we're not particularly worried about okay okay we'll look at the clear parts in a moment so as i said i don't know if it's got a date on this one uh, i can't remember exactly when this kit came out but i've built numerous of these over the years uh, i'm a bit of a starfighter fan if i'm honest and i've done a lot of commission work in the past where i've done them it is a great kit it has um hasagawa's very nice uh very fine recessed details on this one so as you can see on it if you catch it in the lights we maneuver it around you can see there is numerous details all over this one they are very very fine okay very much in scale uh, as opposed to some other companies shall we say where they're a little bit heavily done especially when you think of the age so originally if you look at the tail if i catch it somewhat in the light hopefully you can see you've actually got beautiful recessed details now you might be thinking that by the time you paint it you're going to lose all of that you won't it will stay there just keep your paint coats very light okay and don't over wet them if you make them too wet what happens is is that it all tries to self level then it ends up in holes but you put it down and it dries quite quickly you have no problems that's why i like acrylics but generally the detail round, there is a little bit of flash but then this is because of the age of the kit it's very easy to clean up the plastic that they use is a very hard as you can see it's quite a shiny plastic uh, but it does lend itself to easy clean up because a couple of swipes of the fine sanding stick and you'll have no problems with it at all but just the little details you might be able to see um, as I say catching it on the light here we've added another light in the studio to try and get better reflections but hopefully you can see we've got some very nice details showing through on these different parts right the way through so again no problem with that there's no real internal uh, internal details but you do get a little bit of framework just to go in there you've got a mirror part for the other section okay then onto the wings and as you can see again you catch it in the light you can see all that lovely recessed details you've got two types of doors in here as well okay you've got the uh, the early and the late type the late type being the bulge one it has a thicker wheels so it has a dent but again you might be able to see you've got some very nice uh, details on the inside you can see very nice no ejector pin marks in there okay which is quite nice you have got them in certain other areas don't think this is one of those kits you're not going to get any ejector pin marks in it just so happens that you don't get them on those doors okay holes down here to open up as you can imagine but generally very very nice the one thing i would describe this kit as is very refined okay it's very nice okay not that you're going to use it but you've got the seat parts down here okay you've got a center pylon uh, and some other details as well the actual nozzle again is a beautiful thing to behold um it's just it's one of those areas where you know certainly when you look at it we just drop this top cam a little bit more i'm going to drop this one out just a fraction as you can see very nicely done for a one piece injection molding it is actually very very nice okay so you know no problems with that at all and then generally having a look around as you can see you've got some very nice detail this is the top part of the wheel wells the framework for them these are these bulkheads the center section which is going to go in here again very nicely done very crisply done right the way to the top of the actual um uh, instrument panel itself the cockpit tub you're not going to take any notice of but actually it is pretty good give it a dry brush and a bit of a wash really makes it pop no problem at all with those but you can see some very nice details um, half the engine it does have ejection pin marks in there but you're never going to see them anyway the wheels you've got hubs so you can paint them as a separate there's no weight on wheels with this one unfortunately the aftermarket boys have got that pretty well covered in fact any aftermarket aries do the full thing for this a so wheel wells you name it they do it as well all right but generally as you can see some of the parts the control grip quite nice quite a nice sprue actually got a little bit of flash just on the sprue but no thing on the parts the gates are all very nice very crisply molded especially when you think this isn't a new kit 
Okay, so we've got multiple parts on here. This is just duplicate of that other one we've seen, okay? So actually, we can flip that off. All right, actually, we can do this, make it a bit easier. So we've got the first stage um, of the actual engine set. We've got the afterburner ring as well, okay? And then obviously more stuff. Instrument panel, as you can see, from its part it, it is very nice down in there it's just that you're not actually going to use it we've got some parts for the seating for the ejector seat rail behind the cockpit this is all the gear work down here again it's all very nice it's very crisp and everything else like i said i'm just not sure what date it was actually produced um can't tell exactly okay so there you got uh, this is the top bottoms of the wings as you can see that nice detail all popping through catch it in the light like that you can see it, it looks absolutely fantastic control surfaces so you've got the flaps down here, very nice design. And we've got this giant tail on the top, which as you see, you can catch it in the light there. It has great detail all over that one. Okay, we've got the leading edge of the wings as well. They're all completely done. And we've got the ailerons here on the wing tip, as you can see, they're very nice as well. And again, no problem. Okay, this is the only complicated part with the kit. You have it where the two halves go together and then you have to put this center section in from underneath. Um, getting that scene to look right can be a little bit of a hassle but a few moments spent making sure it's all good you have no problem okay this is a little thing different type of engine down here different type of nozzle for the rear again very nicely done it's a little bit plainer than the other one it's the later type the fuel tanks are absolutely beautiful on this they are very nicely done lots of detail recessed riveted and raised details as well as is on the real thing and you've actually got details you can see some nice riveting things like that going along on these tails they are really really nice so generally all of it is pretty good stuff but the level of detail under here you catch on the, the close-up cam as you can see is absolutely exquisite beautifully done especially as I say for a kit that's older so there's the kit we know the kit's pretty good so the bits you're going to get extra we have here the seat so this is the Brazin seat it's a resin aftermarket replacement um, so actually take no notice even of those this is the rear um, ejection part of the seat that's actually in the aircraft that it goes up it looks like you've got two of them um, so it makes you wonder if they've got a two seat version and we've got two seats so we've got both types of seats which is absolutely beautiful here so we've got the US type and the German type of ejector seat on these as well these are absolutely beautifully done very nicely molded great detail a lot more detail you can imagine anywhere else but just looking at the detail on the sides of the seats and everything else really nicely done the cushions as well as you can see texture onto them it's one thing where you lack uh, having working on one at the moment uh, which is just a standard kit part you can see it's well worth the upgrade very nicely done and then we've got the head box here from the german type for the ejector seat there as well so they're very nicely done Okay, you've got the actual, we won't bother popping them out. Looks like they're not self-adhesive, which is odd. Normally they are. But down here, we've got the color um, instrument panel, the top part and the lower part. Down here, the side areas, all the bits for the seats uh, and the bits and pieces down there. So it's very nicely done. This is the Eddard Zone 1. Again, beautifully done. Well worth the upgrade. Very, very nice. We also come along with, we've got down here is a die cut um, uh, masking set. And we've got the decals, which we'll have a quick scan here. Actually, ours up. All right, we're just trying to work out how to get in. Looks like it's folded it over. It's all right. I've learned a technique to get these out without that way, without sticking the sheet to the area oh there we go and it's easier to get it back as well so we have eddard's own printed uh, by cartograft so generally when you mention that name cartograft you know they're going to be beautifully done very nice consistency beautiful color all the way through for all those great markings on all of those as you can see just like that very very nice indeed and then We've got all the stencil data. Uh, there's quite a bit of, if we're honest, okay? All the way through. So some very nice stuff there. So there you go. It would definitely be my advice. It's a limited edition, so you know what's gonna happen is it will go out of stock quite quickly and then it'll cost you a fortune on eBay. But if you are in the market for a Starfighter, 
okay and you want it to be obviously of the German ones especially but generally the US one as well then obviously you want to get this kit because it's got all the best bits you can possibly get you got the best seat the best decals the best kit uh, and anything you can want like that definitely highly recommended